Hello, and welcome to Charlie's Desk. Um, so today I want to talk about other methods of mechanically embossing Braille, and specifically on the process of making stereotypes. Um, so nowadays, when they make Braille signage or interpretive signs, um, they use a CNC router to drill little holes uh, for all of the Braille dots in the cells, and then there's an attachment to the CNC router that inserts a little dot uh, in each hole, and that's how the Braille is made. Um, but in yesteryear, they would use a machine to emboss into two thin metal sheets sandwiched together and you would you know write out the whole page of the book that you were trying to reproduce and then you would sandwich a piece of paper in between those stereotypes those two metal braille sheets run that through a press and there you go you can keep running paper through that press and reproduce the page of your book or magazine and um you know I doubt any of these things exist outside of archives and they'd be really cool to see, but obviously I can't get my hands on one of those. So what I did find was a page from the Encyclopedia Britannica um, from 1926, I think. Um, so I'll zoom out a little bit. I had been zoomed in just on a picture of the Ziegler Braille embossing machine, but I'll get into that later. So. You know, pre-internet, I mean, how did we gauge common knowledge, you know, back in the 1920s? Um, I guess the Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica was sort of a good place to start for me because it would just be, you know, the place you would ask questions. So um, this one's the 13th edition. Um, and... Yeah, and so the page is blind, and I'll just I'll just read it. So the first picture I can zoom in on it is of a woman in 1920s garb, a full-length dark skirt with an apron and a blouse, and she is sitting at a table with a hall braille writer, which I've made a couple videos about, and I have right here. Um, and this was the first really invented um, and the text says remember this is from 1926 blind girl writing on a braille typewriter international exchange of written and printed matter for the blind has been made easier by the american adoption in 1918 to 1919 of braille code one and one half in most respects the same as braille used throughout the rest of the world but not quite so still sort of uh there was progress to be made and then there is a little picture a little diagram of the hall braille writer um and then the, the description in the text is braille writer 1924 model designed for the use of the blind the writing being done by the touch system each of the six dots used in the Braille alphabet, see volume four, page 69, figure two, is made by a separate key. Thus, any letter can be made by simultaneously depressing the proper keys. Such typewriters are also largely used by seeing volunteers who transcribe into Braille books which would not otherwise readily find their way into Braille. These books are usually bound up and put into circulation through such public libraries as make provision for the lending of books to the blind. Um, the Braille writer takes a sheet of paper up to 12 inches wide, writing a line 10 and 5 eighths inches long, 12 cells. It conforms to the spacing recommended by the Commission on Uniform Type for the Blind. Oh, um, there we go. Uh, standard typewriters, such uh, as are used in ordinary business, have also been adapted uh, to use for the blind who have occasion to write for seeing readers, but they are not in general use as being rather complicated and expensive. Um, but you can also just teach someone to type on a typewriter. 
um, even if we can't see it. Sorry. Uh, then we go, dictation in such instances is sometimes given through the dictaphone or similar machines. And after the World War, the Red Cross gave courses to disabled uh, soldiers in dictaphone um, in connection with courses in typewriting. So that actually, the person who worked on that is MC Miguel, who was very big in the American Foundation for the Blind. And so then the next example is um, the Ziegler Braille embossing machine for embossing metal plates. The general principle is the same as that of the Braille typewriter. Instead of paper, the upright frame holds um, a folded sheet of thin galvanized iron, zinc, brass, or aluminum. It travels from right to left, as an ordinary typewriter carriage does, and up and down for the different lines. The embossing on a pair of metal sheets results in a relief in an intaglio, a male and female plate, interpointing. By turning the pair of sheets over and writing on the other side, between the dots on the first side, each plate becomes a relief plate for one side, and an inaligo plate for the other side of the paper. Thus, both sides may be printed at once in perfect register. Interpointing saves about 35% in bulk as compared with the older method of printing on one side of the paper only. The printing process. In some American presses, it is usual to adjust the metal plates in double cylinder presses um, printing large sheets of paper, which are slit to double leaf size as they come off the press. This method makes possible great speed in large edition work, such as magazines. In such printing, the paper is printed damp and cold. In Europe, the paper is usually printed dry but hot in rather small sheets. Folded metal sheets are placed in ordinary printers, platen presses, with heating apparatus, and the paper is fed down into the metal sheet, which closes up with the motion of the press, embossing both sides in perfect register. So that's pretty cool to think about. Um, and so you just sit down at this thing, it kind of looks like a sawhorse, and there's a rectangular frame that holds the folded thin sheets of metal as described in front of you, and it moves laterally from left to right and then there's a little keyboard you know a seven key entry um for braille right six keys in a space i see if there's a little motor mounted on the bottom and a big wheel that's driven by a um, band coming from the motor on the right side and uh yeah i see a little on and off switch but i don't see a backspace key but i wonder how that works um so yeah uh oh yeah so the, there's also this cool picture of, um, of a Braille uh, diagram or an embossed diagram with some Braille instructions from the Matilda Ziegler magazine uh, for the blind. And it showed instructions for, uh, from which blind readers of the magazine have constructed practical radio receiving sets. Um, the page measures 12 by 5 eighths um, by 12 and 1 fourth inches. So, yeah, and then, so the Matilda uh, Ziegler magazine for the blind was this endowed magazine, and it was published 10 times a year, started in 1907, and uh, yeah, it was just a magazine, you know, for the blind, it was in Braille. I have this copy from 1984, I shut down a while ago, but it was a pretty cool project, and it is printed in Interpoint, and they were the first to do that, and they just kind of hacked um, the Hall stereotype machine um, because the guy who invented the Hall Braille Writer, the cute little piano Braille Writer, he made a stereotyping machine, which, you know, embossed in those plates so you could run them through a printing press and, uh, you know, make Braille magazines and books and whatnot. Yeah, so that is... I guess today's video just chatting just chatting on mechanical reproduction of braille uh the matilda ziegler magazine for the blind and um the hall braille writer and hall stereotyper so yeah i guess this is kind of what was common knowledge in the 1920s um so in in the in the imagination of people the hall braille writer was the braille producing device 
Um, but that would change. That would change. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.